This is the book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 5. They encourage each other to do evil and plan how to set their traps in secret. Who will ever notice, they ask. As they plot their crimes, they say, we have devised the perfect plan. Yes, the human heart and mind are cunning. Shalom. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel, who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Okay, so what I just read are precepts that describes the evil doings of the wicked. And the wicked is none other than Esau Edom, the so-called white man, the Edomites, descendants of Esau, who are still on this earth committing all manners of evil and wickedness. Okay? So there's a saying amongst these uh, woke uh, Israelites, especially, um, cats that are affiliated with Kemet, that whole knowledge of self, uh, mumbo jumbo that they push, all right? They're always quick to tell you about how you need to, uh, you know, learn about yourself and learn about your history and learn about this, that, or the other, okay? Not your Israelite history and heritage, all right? but a Hamite heritage in history, okay? Um, because obviously they think that we are descendants of Ham when we are descendants of Shem, okay? We come from the chosen line, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But where am I going with this? Well, yeah, it's important to know knowledge of self, which you do learn in the truth as Hebrew Israelites. This awakening, you do learn about the knowledge of yourself, your people, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, okay? The path of righteousness and how it's important to take the straight gate in order to get to heaven, right? To the kingdom of heaven, rather. All that's important. But with these, these Kemet uh, Israelites, and they don't call themselves Israelites, they just, they call whatever they call them. All right, they, 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 they're into that Kemet movement. They don't teach you or tell you anything about learning who your enemy is, right? And see, and that's the most important, well, next, it's close to one of the most important things about being in the truth because you have to learn how to move, all right? Once you identify who your enemy is, and yes, we as Israelites, we have enemies, all right, our primary enemy is Esau, Edom, the Edomites, right? So in this truth, you learn who your enemy is. And again, why is that important? Well, why is it important for a sheep to identify their enemy? Well, because they're going to know how to recognize or they're going to need to know how to take action or how to prepare when they're out and about, okay, doing their thing, when they see uh, a, a pack of wolves they're going to know hey that's my enemy I need to run for cover I need to run to safety right the antelope out there in, in uh, you know Africa they recognize their enemy as the lion okay the cheetah the leopard right and how do they respond they take cover they run they sprint for their lives right you don't let them get close enough to you in order to destroy you, take you down and eat you, right? Now, look at us as a people, the Israelites. We're born into this world not knowing that we actually have enemies, people who actually hate us on this earth, right? See, the devil, the so-called white man, is going to push that we're all equal, we're all the same, right? Just to remind you that you don't have any enemies. Okay, that's what that says. That implies that you don't have any enemies. 
okay? When deep in their heart, you can just look at everything that they've done to us. I mean, which tells you, their track record speaks for itself, that we are their enemies, okay? We have an adversarial relationship. We always have and always will, okay? And that's what the scriptures say, all right? Now, with that knowledge, you're supposed to take that knowledge and prepare accordingly, okay, by separating yourselves from them. Now, granted, we're in their society. We're in their world. So we have to learn how to move. We got to learn how to work. We have to learn how to shop, okay, and avoid them at all costs in terms of the pitfalls and the snares and the, the traps that are set for us, okay, because they're not here to do righteousness to us. They're here to punish us. They're here to destroy us. Okay, the Heavenly Father said that he was going to send us over here to the land of our enemies so that, you know, we would be destroyed. And what he meant was in, in mind, primarily. Okay, there was a physical persecution and there still is. That's ongoing. But the crux of the matter is that we're supposed to be destroyed in the mind. Okay, and for all intents and purposes, the two thirds are destroyed in mind. All right. The hopeful elect, because we were quickened with the Holy Spirit, we're on our feet again. Now we have the, the wisdom, okay, to, to learn how to move in this wicked world run by the Edomites, okay? So anyway, knowledge of self is important, but knowledge of your enemy. And we identified who the enemy is. That's the Edomites, okay? So with all that said, you got to be aware of the devices of the devil okay because you just read it let's read it again they encourage each other to do evil and plan how to set their traps in secret who will ever notice they ask see their evil is cloaked and and uh they they carry out their wickedness behind the mask of civility okay and humility and righteousness Okay, they put up this facade, Salakia, they put up this facade to convince you that they, they mean you good, that they're, they're doing good for all of humanity, when all their traps and snares that they're setting are for you Israelites, because you are standing in the way of their kingdom, right, being prolonged or being destroyed. In your ignorance, it prolongs their kingdom. Okay? When you know who you are, of course, and also who they are, well, guess what? You're going to be inclined to take action and return to the Heavenly Father. Repent so we can hasten the return of the Lord, the Messiah. Okay? So anyway, I'm sorry I went on a tangent, but I'm saying all this to say one of their devices the evil wickedness that they're that they've uh, created are these microplastics here okay now microplastics are just that plastics that you can't see because they're so small and they're in everything they're literally in everything okay and people don't realize just how harmful this is all right well, you may be wondering, well, what is microplastics? Well, let's, let's read a little. I pulled up a couple articles here, and it tells you exactly what it is. What are microplastics? Can you see them? We often consider plastic items to be indestructible. But plastic breaks down into smaller particles. Definitions vary, but generally microscopic microplastics are smaller than five millimeters. This makes some too small to be seen with the naked eye. So many of the images the media use to illustrate articles about microplastics are misleading. As some show much larger, clearly visible pieces, microplastics have been reported in many sources of drinking water and everyday food items. This means we are constantly exposed to them in our diet. Such widespread chronic long-term exposure makes this a serious concern for human health. Why wouldn't it? While research investigating 
the potential risk microplastics pose to our health is limited, it is growing. It's not limited. It's just not available, okay? It's not available to the public. These devils know exactly what the hell they're doing, okay? They know the deleterious harmful effects uh, that these microplastics, uh, microplastics pose because everything they do, they put forth a diligent search like the scripture says, okay? They are testing before it's even released. They test the long-term side effects, the short-term side effects on how it affects the body. Because everything that these devils do is aimed at destroying the Hebrew Israelites. Okay? And before we go any further, let's go to the book of Baruch. Because you, you Israelites don't seem to think that you have enemies. Okay? These are our arch enemies. All the heathens are, but the, the Edomites are at the top of the list. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 18. For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he will deliver you from the power, the power and hand of the enemies. Okay, so we were here to serve captivity in the land of our enemies. Notice that this isn't describing our neighbors. It's not referring to them as neighbors, friends, our brothers in Christ. No, it clearly says that they are enemies. They are, advers they are our adversaries. These are the people who took us into slavery. Okay? So, this tells you, it gives you a time frame to understand, okay, where we are in terms of prophecy because it says he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. That's salvation. Okay? That's one component or aspect of salvation. So, this tells you that this is the end time, and yet the Edomites are still going to be considered our enemies, right? So a salvation for the, uh, for the Edomites as well, because here they're referred to as our enemies, all right? Here they're referred to as our enemies. So yes, you have enemies in 2024. You're going to continue having enemies in Esau, Edom as well as the other heathen nations, all right? So you have to move accordingly, all right? You got to look at their devices, and this is a device, okay? Well, let me finish what we were reading. How about this latest study? Now, this was already done, rest assured. Trust me on that. The study looked at concentrations of mycoplastics in 51 samples from men and women set aside from the routine autopsies, a post-mortem examination, that's what an autopsy is. Okay, after you die, they examine the body, especially the organs, to see what kind of things were deposited in the organs when the person was alive. Okay, how did it get there? All right, and you're going to learn that these microplastics are delivered to different aspects of the body, different organs. Samples were from the liver, the kidney, and brain. These tiny particles are difficult to study due to their size because they're damn near microscopic. Even with a high-powered microscope, right? Yeah, and this tells you that they're, microsco uh, they're, they're microscopic. You can't see them with the naked eye. If you've got to break out the microscope, then you can't see them with the naked eye. So rather than trying to see them, researchers are beginning to use complex instruments that identify the chemical composition of microplastics in a sample. This is the technique used in this study. The researchers were surprised to find up to 30 times more microplastic in brain samples than in the liver and kidney. I'm going to stop right there. What's significant about the brain? Well, the brain is, is the, uh, the, the, the computer of the body, okay? Everything goes, everything is processed through the brain. Okay, information is entered into the brain, all right? It tells the other organs, it tells the, the, the extremities, all right, the body systems, how to move, how to operate, how to function, right? So what do you think is going to happen if you have something that's targeting the brain? It's going to impair the functionality of the brain, okay? It's going to impair 
or change the structure of the brain. Okay? If it changes the structure and the, uh, the anatomy of the brain, it's also going to affect the functionality of the brain. Right? And it's, it's going to open the door for other things to, to begin to take place, like Alzheimer's disease. Okay? Now, they're not going to tell you this in these studies. All right? Now, from what I know about the body, because I'm in medicine, well, I'm going to continue, and, and then I'm going to um, share a little uh, insight, okay, um, as to why I think they're doing this. They hypothesize this could be due to high blood flow to the brain carrying plastic particles within it, or with it, okay? So the blood-brain barrier, it's a lot, I'm getting ahead of myself. Alternatively, the liver and kidneys might be better suited to dealing with external toxins and bar particles because they detoxify the body. We also know the brain does not undergo the same amount of cellular renewal as other organs in the body, which could make the plastics linger there. Okay, so yeah, the brain, the brain doesn't really regenerate itself like other organs. Okay, you're stuck pretty much with a fixed amount of uh, cells. All right, in the brain. So when you damage those brains, a lot of them can't be repaired. Most of them can't be repaired. The research has also found the amount of plastics in brain samples increased by about 50% between 2016 and 2024. This may reflect the rise in environmental plastic pollution and increased human exposure. The microplastics found in this study were mostly composed of polyethylene this is the most commonly produced plastic in the world and is used for many everyday products such as bottle caps and plastic bags. This is the first time microplastics have been found in human brains, which is important. However, this study is preprint, so other independent microplastic researchers haven't yet reviewed or validated this study. Bullshit. Of course they did. They put forth a diligent search like the scripture says. They know exactly how it's affecting the body. Trust me on that. They know. They know. They know. They know. This is why they're doing it. Okay? They didn't just start creating these products and say, hey, um, oh, wow, what's a, what's a side effect of creating all these things, these plastics? They already knew. What they did is they determined how to uh, uh, create toxins and disseminate them in every aspect of society, okay? Every aspect of the world, okay? From breathing in these, chem these microplastics to drinking them when you drink water, right? They're in the ocean. So what happens when you, you, uh, you subsist on, on uh, marine animals, fish, right? And the, the people that eat the abominable food, like the crustaceans, the crabs, the lobsters, the, the mollusks, right the clams right shark swordfish all right all those predatory fish they feed on this stuff they feed on smaller animals or smaller fish fishes and then ultimately they become in, in uh, contaminated with these microplastics this is why you're seeing a lot of these whales beach themselves and sharks beach themselves okay because it affects the brain all right and I don't know where in the article it says, but oh, here it is. As I speak about it, here it is. To get into brain tissue, microplastics must cross the blood-brain barrier, an intricate layer of cells that is supposed to keep things in the blood from entering the brain. See, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai created the perfect, the perfect uh, body, right? Because this is something that was designed to keep things from crossing into the brain. But this devil decided to create these microplastics that can, in fact, enter the blood-brain barrier. Right? Now, the Heavenly Father knew what he was doing when he created these devils. Right? But this is part of the punishment. But after they're eradicated from this earth, this won't be a problem anymore. Okay? And it wasn't a problem in the past until... Esau Edom came into power, okay, with this captivity. Although concerning, this is not surprising. 
uh, as microplastics must cross similar cell barriers to enter the urine, testes, and placenta, okay, with a pregnant woman, all right, it crosses the placenta and, and it enters into the organs of the fetus or the baby, where they have already been found in humans. Is this a health concern? Of course it's a freaking health concern. We don't, know, we don't yet know the effects of microplastics in the human brain. Of course they do. This is why you're seeing um, all kinds of neurological issues develop, such as um, Alzheimer's disease, okay? Which is uh, the development of plaques in the cerebral arteries, okay? You see these plaques begin to form in the, in the arteries in the brain, and eventually it's going to cause disease. It's, it's going to affect the way you think. It's going to affect your behavior, all right? It's going to cause all kinds of neuro neurological issues that are deadly. That, uh, you know, when you get Alzheimer's disease, it's, it's a terminal illness pretty much, okay? You die from it. You go crazy, all right? Let's see. Uh, some laboratory experiments suggesting microplastics increase brain inflammation. Of course it does. And cell damage and alter gene expression and change brain structure of course it does okay so when you get all that you're going to get a new onset of disease all types of neurological diseases okay diseases that you didn't see in the early part of the century because there was no such thing as microplastics okay food was created and put in containers such as glass and other um, holding mechanisms, if you will, that, that you know, didn't have uh, uh, toxic chemicals seeping into your food, okay, or drink. Aside from the effects of the microplastics, uh, microplastic particles themselves, microplastics might also pose risks if they carry environmental toxins or bacteria into and around the body. And I'm going to stop right there, all right? let's take a look at this little diagram here microplastics the devil's glitter so what they're telling you is it looks flashy it, it appeals to the eye right and who created it Esau Edom the devil the devil that the Bible speaks of because the devil uh, the Bible refers to a nation of people as the devil collectively all right and we also know that there's spiritual Satan all right now devil simply means um, slanderer okay and that's what these these Edomites have done to us since day one all right now how can we fix this we can recycle our plastic waste to help reduce the plastic that ends up in the ocean but be sure to secure the items to prevent any from accidentally blowing away I mean this is just this is absurd okay because they know full wells everywhere everywhere you can't escape it it's in the air that you breathe it's in the water that you drink all right how do microplastics negatively impact the environment because microplastics are small and colorful many animals such as turtles and birds mistake them for food the chemicals from the plastic can linger in the digestive symptom or system and cause harmful side effects the microplastic can get into or get them so like it can get then also get passed up the food chain when that animal is consumed okay so this is no laughing matter man these devils are you know doing all kinds of evil and wickedness as to destroy our people okay look at all the information on these microplastics all right now these would be macroplastics microplastics are smaller than two millimeters if I'm not mistaken okay but nonetheless they're still consumed okay they're still consumed because these fish see them and they consume all right and if it if they consume these microplastics and you consume the fish the lawful fish and seafood then what happens you ingest it and take it into your body and you're affected right and look at this uh diagram plastic does not go away plastic is so permanent and so indestructible that when you've tossed it in the ocean or even into a dustbin, it does not go away. 192 billion pieces of plastic in Australia's marine environment. 
That's just Australia alone. Okay? These devils must be stopped. All right. Let's get some more scriptures. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, of the Israelites. Right? And here's the point. And shouldest destroy them, not one person, not talking about Satan, which destroy the earth. Satan's not up here burning down shit and blowing up, uh, blowing up, uh, dropping nuclear bombs and atom bombs and hydrogen bombs, uh, cutting down the rainforest. Who's doing that? Okay? You know, these Edomites like to say, man is doing all this. No, what man is doing this? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man is responsible for this. All right? Then you got the other heathen nations that follow in his footsteps, some more than others, but he is the ringleader. Okay? He is the one that's destroying the earth. When it says them, it's talking about a collective nation of people. Okay? Doing all manners of wickedness to destroy the earth. Does this not destroy the earth? You got 9 million tons of... Nine million tons this year alone of plastic will enter the world's oceans. This is absolutely just wicked to the core. Nobody, no one seemed to take notice of this. They always say, yeah, this is mankind's. No, this is the Edomites doing. Okay. The scriptures say the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked are the Edomites. Pursue it to the book of Malachi chapter one, verse four. All right, let's go to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, you can't be ignorant of these devil's devices because these devices are created to destroy us. All right, they're, they're created to separate us from our Lord, our power, and they're created to destroy us. So this is, not, this is nothing that you should be scoffing at. This is nothing that you should be trying to turn a blind eye to. All right? You need to recognize the devices of these devils, the ones that they make you put in your arm to prevent sickness. You know what I'm talking about, right? Those deletion clinics where our babies go, okay, and are disposed of. That's a device of the wicked, right? These chemtrails. Those are devices of the wicked because they seep into the air. They seep into the water. They seep into the ground. All right. You grow food. Guess what? You're going to have those chemicals that were released via those chemtrails seeping into the food, seeping into the soil. Okay. We in turn ingest that. The animals that we subsist on, they eat, you know, stuff from the ground. Okay. And guess what? They get contaminated. We, in turn, can consume those animals, the cows, right, the chickens, okay? Everything that's lawful to eat, the fowl, all right? Everything that's lawful to eat is pretty much contaminated because of these devils, all right? Now, this is something that, you know, again, you Israelites, <clears throat> you have to realize and recognize who and what you're dealing with, all right? Because all of this is leading up to that mark, the mark of the beast. You know what I'm talking about? The Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Okay? Because that is how he's going to be able to exert all kinds of control over all of mankind, but especially you Israelites. Because this is about affecting us more than anybody else. Because, again, we're standing in the way of their kingdom, all right, being prolonged. When we come back to the understanding of who we are as Israelites, all right, it's pretty much a wrap for them, all right? It's a wrap now. But the more this gospel gets out and our people start waking up, at some point, guess what's going to happen? It's going to hasten the return of our Lord, Shai, and these Edomites are going to be taken out of power, and that's what they do not want, all right? Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. For they sleep not 
except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Let's look that up in the NLT. Okay, this is talking about the Edomites. We ain't talking about the Israelites. They eat Salakia. Verse 16, for evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deeds for the day. They can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. You Israelites, okay, they're constantly plotting on wicked things, wicked devices to create, all right, to use on you Israelites to destroy you. They eat the food of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, the way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. Well, we'll stop at 17. Okay, but you get the point. All right, they subsist on wickedness. They thrive on evil. All right, they drink the wine of violence. This is what they're, tr they're known for. Their trademark is violence and destruction. Okay, when you say violence, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be blowing shit up all the time. Okay, Creating these microplastics is a form of violence, okay? It's destructive. It's very destructive. What's, what's the difference? A gun just does more damage. A knife just does more damage. This causes chronic destruction over a period of time, okay? It's a slow, gradual, progressive type of violence that's taking place because it's destroying you. It's destroying your mind. And this is what they want. They want control of your mind. Okay? If this crosses the blood-brain barrier, it's going to affect the way you think. It's going, to way, it's going to affect the way you process information. Perhaps it may even affect the way you view the world. They know what they're doing. Okay? They target the brain. They target the other or, uh, organs in the body to destroy them. So you can be destroyed. Okay? At any rate... This information is very informative, but it just it shows you the mind of these devils and what they're up to. Okay, they hate you Israelites, and they're they're not going to stop at anything, all right, to destroy you, to, to not destroy you. Okay, that's the goal. That is the goal. They want their kingdom prolonged. All right, and you Israelites, you elect Israelites are standing in the way of that. Okay, they don't understand. That once we stand on our feet as the elect of the nation of Israel, Yahweh was shy, the sons of God, it's a wrap for them. Okay? Because Yahweh Shai is going to be coming very, very soon to take these people out of power. And when he does, they are going to pay for every damn thing. Like the scripture uh, just read in Revelation, he's going to destroy them that destroyed the earth. That's a fact. All right? Anyways, with that, I want to say all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.